Okay, let's talk about the AccuPlacer Next Generation Arithmetic Exam. So, um, if you're watching this video, I assume that you already pretty much know what the AccuPlacer is. There's a lot of different AccuPlacer courses, or excuse me, um, exams, and what they're designed for is kind of kind of uh, implies in their names. It's it's a placement exam, pretty much to determine where your uh, current knowledge and skill level is going to. Um, uh, place you in a particular program or college. They're very important exams uh, because if you don't, you know, really take them seriously and you don't do well just because you had a pass, bad test day, you could end up uh, taking a course that's beneath your uh, real skill level, and then you're wasting time and money to finish your, um, you know, your education. So you want to take these uh, exams seriously and study for them. Um, you need a good program of study. Uh, I would strongly suggest something that involves an actual teacher. If you like my teaching style, I have an actual uh, specific um, prep course for this. I'll leave the link in the description of this video. But uh, you can find a lot of information on my channel, um, a lot of math videos. Of course, my background is a math t uh, math teacher, taught uh, middle school, high school, college, etc. So um, anyways, this particular video is going to be just some basic practice on the order of operation, something you absolutely are uh, going to need to know for um, the AccuPlacer Next Gen uh, Arithmetic exam. So just a quick video on order of operations, what you really need to do is study this in more detail and do a lots and lots of practice. So let's get into it. And let me go ahead and just uh, write a problem out. And let's see here. Okay, so if you want, a good, kind of good test here is to go ahead and pause the video and see if you can actually determine the answer uh, to this problem. If you get this problem uh, correct, it's a pretty good indication that you're you're pretty uh, strong with the order of operations, but even if you do get this correct, you need to do a lots of prompts to really um, kind of be at the mastery level. But if you want to pause the video, you should write it out and all nice and neat and everything else. If you don't really kind of know how to approach this, then let's uh, get into it. All right, so the order of operations is basically the rules, okay? It's basically the rules that tell us what operations to do first. Now, of course, um, we need to define what operations are, right? So operations are mathematical operations. These are addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and powers, okay? Powers and exponents. So I'll kind of go into this because this problem here has a little bit of all that. And of course, the order is what order do we do these operations when we see them in one big problem, which order do we do them in, okay? So the way to um, remember this is a nice little saying here, PEMDAS, P, well, let's do it this way, P-E-M-D-D-A-S, PEMDAS. Okay, so P stands for parentheses. We're going to do everything we see inside parentheses first. E stands for exponents, basically powers. Okay, we're going to do the, that next. M stands for multiplication. D stands for division. A stands for addition. And S stands for subtraction. Okay, so this is basically the order we're going to do this in. But we're going to do this. Let me write it this way, actually. PM... We're going to do this from left to right as we see things from left to right, okay? So very important, and we're going to basically follow this order. Now, there is um, an area where students get confused. I'm going to highlight that here real quick, then we'll talk about it, and then we'll do this problem. Okay, so we're going to do parentheses first, then exponents or powers next, okay? And, and there is some... We're basically going to be following these. It's a guideline because you can have multiple things going on at once, but that's why you need to practice this a lot. But basically, okay, we're going to be doing parentheses first or um, uh, grouping symbols. Uh, so parentheses, 
brackets and even these type of brackets, okay? These are called grouping symbols, but that's what the P stands for. And then E are, is the exponents or powers. Now, M and D and A and S, right? Multiplication and division and addition and subtraction. We're going to do whatever we see first from left to right. So in other words, I'm not always going to do multiplication and division first. If I have division, if I see division first from left to right, and then multiplication, the order changes, okay? Same thing with subtraction and addition. So just know from multiplication to division and addition to subtraction, it's whatever operation you see first from uh, left to right, okay? All right, so with that being said, let me go and erase all of this, and we'll get going. Again, this is just a quick review video. Um, hopefully you're uh, you know, somewhat um, familiar with this. Of course, you should be because this is the type of math you do kind of like in your, uh, you kind of start off really with this um, in middle school. But let's get to it. All right, so here I have a lot going on, right? So what do I do first? Well, first of all, let me just point out to you, anytime you have a big expression here, and you have one big fraction bar like so, okay? you want to kind of separate the problem, okay? So in other words, you want to look at the numerator as one problem and the denominator as another problem. Then we're going to basically get one number over here, one value when we finish all of this, and we're going to divide it by whatever value we get over here, okay? So then this will be our final answer once we um, uh, divide these two values. Okay, so that's kind of how you want to approach things when you have one big fraction bar. Fraction bar is basically the same thing as division, okay? But this is a good way to organize this. So when we're doing this, you think of these as two independent problems. So whether you start or start in the numerator or the denominator, it doesn't really difference, but make a difference. But let's go ahead and start in the numerator. Again, you want to think of these as separate situations. So we're going to apply the rules here, and then we're going to apply the rules here, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this numerator. And looking at it, um, I see that, well, let's write the PEMDAS up here again. P-E, PEMDAS. Okay, so I'm looking for parentheses. Are there any parentheses? Yes, they're right here, right? So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna do everything inside the parentheses. Now, if you look inside the parentheses, there's a couple things we need to do. So we need to look at this order again. So I'm looking through here, and I'm saying, okay, are there any other parentheses uh, inside my parentheses? Because sometimes there can be, but there isn't. So I go to my E. Or is there any powers? No, I don't see any powers. A power is something like this, right? Two square, three to the fourth, those type of things. So I don't see any exponents here. So we move on, and now I'm looking at multiplication and division. So I do, do I see multiplication and division? Yes, I do. I see division here and multiplication. I see D and M. Okay, so here, a lot of students would confuse this. They would think that they would do multiplication first. They would do this first, and then the division uh, next. That's not the case, right? We're going to do whatever we see first from left to right. And so what do we see first from left to right? We see division. So this is our first step in doing this problem. So let me actually scoot this over here just so we have more room. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is, is do this 10 divided by 2. So I'm going to rewrite everything. 2. And then what's the results of 10 divided by 2? Of course, that's 5, right? So that's going to be 5 times 5 plus 1. I'm, I'm just going to rewrite the rest of the problem. 3 minus 1 over 2. All right, so this is where we're at. Our first step, we did the division, but we're not done yet, right? Now we have to do the multiplication. So we're left with 5 times 5. So 5 times 5, okay, of course, because we're not done with the parentheses step. We're not done getting down to one value yet uh, inside the parentheses. So 5 times 5 is 25. So I'm going to have 2 times 25 plus 1 all over 3 minus 1 squared. Okay, so again, let's just focus on the numerator, the top part here, until we get down to one value, and then we'll focus on the denominator. So what am I going to do next? Well, I have a... Uh, Addition here, and right here is what operation? 
The two outside of the 25, in parentheses, is multiplication. So I have to do multiplication uh, first before I do the addition. So this is going to be 2 times 25 is 50. Okay, and I'm just going to rewrite the rest of the problem. 50 plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 2. Okay, so let's pick up this problem down here. I'll write it this way, 50 plus 1. And typically, I kind of like to work more uh, vertically. I'm kind of doing this horizontally just so I don't have to move the screen up and down a lot. But uh, you get the kind of... Uh, just of what I'm doing. I'm showing each, each, I'm showing the problem. I'm working it step by step and kind of writing a written record. This is how you do math, okay? So you can kind of look back and check your work. All right, so here's where we're at. So we're not done with the numerator. So the last thing I need to do is addition, right? There's no other operations here. So this is going to be 51. And I'm done with the numerator. So now let's move on to the denominator. And if you look here, I have parentheses, right? So I got to do what's inside parentheses, and this is 3 minus 1. That's pretty easy. That's going to be 2 squared. So 2 squared is going to be what? 2 times 2. So powers, right, the way it works, 2 squared means take this big number and multiply it by itself this many times, 2. Okay, so that's 2 times 2. That's 4. If I had 2 cubed, that means 2 times 2 times 2. All right, so of course that's going to be 8. All these basic power things, working with numbers, all this kind of stuff, you absolutely need to know for this exam. So we um, move forward. So 2 squared is going to be 4, and that's over 51, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so this would be your final answer. Of course, you could turn that into a decimal. Uh, it's not reducible, and that's basically it. So just a quick math uh, uh, problem on the order of operations. If you got this problem right, kudos to you. That's excellent. But there was um, more complicated problems. I could have taken all these problems and and, and replaced the numbers with, uh, excuse me, taken this problem, replaced the numbers with fractions and positive and negative numbers. And, you know, of course, made it more interesting, <laughs> more uh, challenging. So uh, this is what I would say is kind of like a basic level intermediate level prom for the type of stuff that you're going to need for uh, to know for the AccuPlacer uh, next gen arithmetic exam. But anyways, so hopefully, you know, you got something out of uh, this video, at least to kind of maybe know where you stand with the order of operations. So what you need to do to do uh, to really, you know, you know, secure a good, uh, an excellent grade for this exam is to have a study plan. There's a lot of study material out there. I would strongly suggest something that has uh, a teacher teaching you. If you like my teaching style, again, I have a specific test prep course for this. I'll leave the link in the description. I also have tons of videos uh, on my YouTube channel, literally hundreds that you can benefit from. Um, I, I make all types of videos for different types of exams and course levels, etc. So you may want to uh, hopefully consider subscribing to my channel and I'm posting videos all the time. Um, if you enjoyed the video, definitely would appreciate a thumbs up. And last but not least, Leave me some feedback. It's the only way I know, um, you know, what I can do better. Or if you can give me some ideas on future requests, I can do things like that. But I will be posting lots of videos. I have, at this point, on my YouTube channel, uh, uh, several hundred videos. And I do it because I'm passionate about mathematics. There's such a huge need out there for people to learn. I mean, there's a lot of material, you know, um, everywhere, you know, out there, free uh, material. But the thing about it is... Remember, it's not about the material. Here you can have all this material here. You, you, I mean, there you have access to books, libraries, and everything else. Guess what the deal is? The deal is this. The material can be confusing. All right? It's like why you have teachers. Would I just give people just big old textbooks and say, read the textbook. You don't need a teacher. The teacher is the key, right? Here's the teacher. Here's the material Real, for you to really you know, get, the, get and understand this material. The teacher is kind of like the translator, all right? Someone who's to explain things in kind of an easy and understandable manner. This is what I like to try to do. Um, so if you connect with my teaching style, you're going to find all the things that you're going to, you know, uh, really need to, to excel on this exam uh, in my courses. But with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time. I wish you all the best on the AccuPlacer and uh, have a great day.